Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, today I am working still on my elephant journal and I bought these um, elephant, some, they're actual wood block stamps. And this one is a cute little elephant. And this is, one is Ganesh. And um, I wanted to have a play and I want to use some different things with them. I have picked out some um, acrylic inks. I have a variety of colors of acrylic inks. Um, very inexpensive from Michaels. I have some stamp pads. I picked out some um, distress inks. I have wild honey and peacock feathers. I have some archival. I have spiced marmalade. Mermaid Lagoon and Barn Door in archival ink. I have one Distress Oxide because I'm not, I'm, I'm skeptical about how well this world will work. We'll see. Um, maybe I'm wrong. And then I also have these two ink packs, uh, Ranger Archival, sorry, Ranger Archival uh, ink in black, jet black and sepia. And I have for substrates, I have some uh, muslin. This is very thin muslin uh, strip cut off. These are just scraps from some other journal. I have some packaging paper, which is super thin. I have this paper. It's like copyweight paper, um, but it's fairly porous. I have some tracing paper. I think this is tracing paper. This is very vellum-like tracing paper. And then I also have a piece of kind of cream cardstock that's a heavier weight and some, you know, classic copy paper itself. Um, so yeah, so let's just, I pulled out my um, glass mat. You can see my rings there, I'm so sorry. Um, let me, let, let's start off with, I'm really curious about the fabric. So let's start off with the fabric. Um, so this fabric is a little bit, won't quite fit, or maybe just barely, Ganesh will just barely fit on that fabric. So let's try that. And I'd like to try it with a little bit of, um, I'm going to just weight, weight this fabric down so it's taut. Let's see where it can fit. That fit right there. And I want to try using some acrylic paint to start. So I'm gonna try with some turquoise paint. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, oh, I also have um, my handy dandy paper towel roll and my handy dandy bag of uh, all these baby wipes. So I just want to brayer some of this. I suppose I could be using my jelly plate as well. I feel like I have enough stuff out. Okay, so I think the key is going to be using, finding the just right amount of ink and paint to use on these guys because too much paint and it'll get gloppy and you'll lose precision and not enough paint and you will not get an image. Whoops, that was a miss feet there. So here we go. So Lord Ganesh is the removal of obstacles. Oh, you know what? I'm silly. I should have put down some foam underneath. I do have some foam. Oh, hold on. I'm just standing up. Um, so I do have some foam there that I probably should have put underneath to allow the the stamp and the fabric to kind of sink into each other. Yeah, that totally was a fail. All right. Let's try that again. But this time, see, I don't want to, I'm worried about also having a buildup of paint on here. Um, because a buildup of paint will, like I say, mute the precision 
of the cuts. So I should probably have a stamping off sheet. What's this? This is a piece of scrap cardstock. Yeah. Okay, so let's try this again, but let's put some foam underneath here. And I'm just going to flip this over and see how that works. One heavy thing there and another heavy thing there. All right. Um, so we still have plenty of paint on my little um, Tim Holtz glass mixed media mat. So let's try this again with the, the roller. I think ideally you're supposed to have a foam roller, but I don't have a foam roller. And so I thought I would try to make it with a normal brayer. Okay. Let's try this with the foam underneath. And I'm going to stand up and give it a proper, oh, I'm kind of low in the viewfinder there. I'm glad I stood up. I'll move it in just a sec. Rah. Gonna give it a little rock. Let's see. I'm gonna push it up for the reveal. That's better. Yep, that's better. Bum bum bum. Ah, ha, ha. Much, much better. Look at that. It's a little bit off the page or off the fabric, but a much better print. Okay. Let's try the other little, put him over here to dry. Let's try the other little, little one. He's so cute. Get rid of some of these strings here. Maybe I can make a little line. You know how elephants are always depicted walking in a line, trunk to tail. I can, maybe I can have a little line and that could be a nice little pocket. Okay, should I just, I feel like I should just use up, I'm going to give Lord Ganesha here a little bit of a wipe before I lose Does anybody know how you're supposed to take care of these stamps? I don't, I don't know what you're actually supposed to do. Because it's wood, so I imagine you're probably supposed to, like, how do you keep them from cracking and drying out? I don't know. I think I ordered these off of eBay. Okay. I want to do right by Lord Ganesh. Okay, so I've got this cute little stamp. I'm, I've used it bef this one before, I think. It's got some paint on it. So I'm going to start over here and work my way. Oh, they're so cute. Can I do this? Probably could, especially if I had a um, a jelly plate. Like use the jelly plate. Oh, that came out nice. So this is just acrylic paint, I suppose. If you were using this and you wanted to make a garment and print on actual fabric, uh, you would probably want some kind of fabric stable paint, which this is not, but I am just using it in a journal. So no harm, no foul. Okay, and I'm going to wipe. That worked off, worked out very satisfyingly. I realize my little, they're all, they're dancing. They're dancing elephants. They're doing a little happy dance. Oh, mess. Make it a mess. If you do not like to make messes, perhaps this is not the thing for you. Why not? Trying to get the little bits of paint that are stuck in the little cracks there. 
because I don't want it build up. And I don't think you want to soak these in water because I think the water would not be good for the wood. So again, if you know what I'm supposed to do to be a good wood stamp owner, let me know. Okay, so I have way too much blue on my board and on my brayer. So I'm gonna give that a wipe. And then I'm going to give this a wipe. <clears throat> this is a messy craft day. Messy, messy, messy. I don't mind mess. That's what craft rooms are for, right? And I do have a bathroom right there, so not a big deal. I'm very fortunate to, we converted um, the den, which actually was originally the kitchen. Where I'm sitting was actually originally where my uh, refrigerator was, come to think of it. I had, no, I don't, no, I lied. No, no, this was a little counter. I can't even remember so long ago. And then we renovated it. It became the den. And then my son moved out, went to college. <laughs> and I took it over and it's now my office. Yay. Okay. So let me, I'm really enjoying stamping on this muslin. I want to try, so there's the, the line of dancing elephants. Very cute. I want to try um, ink on this fabric. Let's see what happens with ink. So let me give my little, my little dancing elephant another little wipe off here. It still has, it still has paint on it. I don't know how to get rid of that paint. And Mr. G Lord Ganesh here too. Maybe the Lord Ganesh, uh, a lot of the Hindu gods have animal companions and they're often depicted with their companion. And Lord Ganesh's companion is a little rat. And I, he's not in this drawing. It's very beautiful, but it's sad to not to see his little companion. Okay, so let me try um, an archival ink. Let's try. Mermaid Lagoon because it's a similar color. So again, I'm just going to hold down the edges because I'm not ironing. And try some Mermaid Lagoon archival ink on here. It's beating up, it looks like. But that could be okay. So this is the Mermaid Lagoon on, I'm going to do it this way, on uh, thin muslin. Oh, that actually worked quite nicely. It's kind of faint, but I don't mind that it's faint. So I'm going to wipe that down. Break that off, and I'm going to try the other colors of the archival ink. So I also have a spiced marmalade. And then I'll do some paper. Because I don't think I can use distressed inks on fabric. Even if it's going into a journal. Okay, so this is spiced marmalade. And definitely the foam. So this is this foam is packaging, came with, um, I don't know what it came with, but it's packaging foam. And then this is just like craft foam, foam hmm, craft foam, excuse me, from Michael's. Yeah, that one came, that did not come out very well. Let's try one more and do the, um, the barn door because it's a stronger color. So 
this is Distress Ranger Archival Ink Permanent Waterproof Barn Door. I can feel when I push down, I can feel it all give a little bit so that you're getting all the the details of the, the carving. Oh yeah, that one's better. That one's quite a bit better. Okay, very cool. Let us put the fabric aside. I'm gonna keep the foam here and bring in some paper. And I'm gonna start with the, um, this is packaging paper. And I suspect that the packaging paper will do quite well because um, I just want to see the edges. I want to do a oh Lord Ganesh here um, because it's absorbent. And for this one, I'm going to try the Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide. And you can kind of see the coating. It does coat the stamp very well and because it's a slightly different color that, than what was there, you, this is good. I can kind of see where I'm hitting it and where I'm not hitting it. There's some little details in here that are lower. They're a little bit deeper. That's okay because I have the foam and it will give. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. I'm going to stand up again because he's such a big stamp. I've seen these wooden block stamps on Etsy as well as on eBay. And I think I wound up going with eBay because it was just cheaper. And that's interesting. It's a fairly light print. But interesting nonetheless. Okay. All right. Actually, I'm going to leave that there and then see. Let me give Lord Ganesh a wipe. There's actually quite a bit of ink coming off. I wonder why it didn't transfer that well. I guess it's okay. All right. Let me try with my cute little elephant friend here. Um, I'm going to grab another Distress Oxide. Oh, you know what? I have some Seedless Preserve. I don't often use my Seedless Preserve because I'm not a bright color person generally, but this particular journal is really helping me use my brighter colors. Look how pretty that is. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's a nice juicy stamp too. Oh, can you see that on my on screen? Yeah, I'll show it closer to you in a second. Um the stamp off on this. Got a couple second press stamps there. Okay, so that was fest. No, I'm sorry, that was seedless preserves distress oxide, and now I have some festive berries. And this I remember being a pretty juicy stamp. Yeah, I like that I can see what I'm stamping on too, like I can see where it's hitting the stamp. And I'm going to go right next to that cute little one. Oh, yes. That came out quite nicely. Here, let me hold it up to the camera for you. Oops. So here are those cute little stamps. And then here's the Ganesha. I should try and do a different one of these juicy distress oxides on a different piece of paper. Let's see what we get if we use this brown paper. Um, it feels like, does it feel like 
copy paper. Here's my copy paper. I don't know what I've done with my list. Copy paper. I know it might be slightly thicker than copy paper. I'm just going to weight it down. I'm going to bring in Lord Ganesha there. And I'm just looking through my other Distress Oxide. Oh, and Wild Honey. Um, I don't want, I, I keep, I keep picking up like the boring colors. Let's try some Wild Honey and Distress Oxide. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that, actually I lie. Let's not do that. Let's do, let's just do Festive Berries because of the, the color of the um, paper. It's going to need to stand out. And I don't think the wild honey will actually stand out. But this is good because I can, again, the change in color is letting me see perhaps where I've, ooh, little twisting action. Doing a little twisting action here. That's helping the coating. Okay, let's see this, how this one goes. So Lord Ganesha has a mantra too, and it's going through my head. What do you think? Is that enough? I'm really pushing. I'm doing a little rocking. All right, ready? Aww. Huh. Struggling with this one. What do you think, guys? What do I need to do to make this come out better? It's his little face. His little face isn't coming out as well as I'd like it to. All right. Let's try the flower came out well. It's really his this this eye over here. All right. I don't know. Have, like, I think it had some kind of white. I don't know if it was a gesso or base coat when it came. Okay. I mean, it's still lovely. Let's compare. Here's Ganesh on the this heavier paper with Festive berries and the lighter paper with the other uh, peacock feathers. The peacock feathers came out a little bit better, um, and I can still see that this is beading up a little bit. It's like if I were to put my finger on it, it would, it would smush. Um, so let's put that over there to dry. Um, so let me try. Let's try some tracing paper. Got. This is, I think, just, I don't, I lost the cover for this. It's just a stack now. Um, let's try an archival ink for this one. And should I go with black? I'm worried about black archival on that. No. Let's go, I think it's got to be, I don't think the Distress Oxides will do well on this paper. What do I have in archival, the small archivals? I have vintage photo, that's such a boring color. I'm not supposed to be boring. I'm not supposed to be not being boring. Ooh, here we go. Got some dusty concord. Dusty concord. See those preserves was the last one? I got some dusty concord here. Let's see if we can get a print of dusty concord. I'm gonna go over his little face. 
because he's so cute. He has flowers in his trunk and he's got some flowers and he's holding some flowers. Very often he'll, you'll see him depicted um, with little bowls of food. Let's see how this comes out. could be cool if it comes out on the tracing paper. Okay. I think I've got all all the parts. Okay. Drum roll please. Bum, bum. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to push like CPR. Ah, 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 ah. Stand alive, stand alive. That's what you're supposed to sing when you do CPR. <laughs> That's where that came from. Okay. I really am like pushing like CPR. Okay, ready? Rocking action. I want to get a little face. <gasps> Ooh! Ooh, that one came out better. Here, let me grab a piece of paper to put behind. Oh, <laughs> I grabbed a piece of uh, tracing paper. <laughs> There's a piece of white paper. Oh, yeah, that came out better. Awesome. 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 All right. What else have I got? I've got some cardstock. Shall we try a piece of cardstock? Let's do a piece of cardstock with that same archival ink again. So I haven't used this on paper yet, I don't think. So do you think it was that I just did a better job inking it? on that last one on the, I mean, it could well be user error. I am, I am not ashamed to admit that it could be, could be me. Let me know what you think. If you've done this before, if you've used these wooden blocks, I've used the small ones, never such a big one. It's my first really good size one. I think if you were using this on fabric, A, you would have to use because, you know, they do the block print fabric. You'd have to use some kind of um, different kind of medium that was specifically made for fabric. And I think you would have to... I saw a one tutorial where the person put the paint onto, like, a scrungy, spongy pad. And then they used that to ink up the, the block. Um, it'd be cool to have a skirt or dress made out of fabric printed with Lord Ganesh. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I just, I think I just moved you. Okay. Here we go. Ugh. Okay, ready? Oh, 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 oh. Bam. Ah. Mediocre. Mediocre. I'm disappointed. So far, the tracing paper and the, um, so this, this kind of packaging paper. All right, I'm gonna do a purple one on the packaging paper, and then I am going to um, put Lord Ganesh aside and just do some little ones with the cute little elephant because I think the cute little elephant also, because it's smaller, will have a lot more places that I could use it. I mean, this is a pretty intricate 
stamp. So what did the, the fabric one was kind of mediocre too, wasn't it? The fabric, well, no, the paint and the fabric one was probably the best. Okay, so maybe, maybe I just, I need to use paint uh, with, with Lord Ganesha here. It could be, it needs to be like a really super kind of juicy, thicker medium in order to get all of the little details. Okay. I guess I'm in a purple mood today too. Okay. This is barely on screen. I am so sorry. Uh, messages. They don't know I'm filming. So how are all you today? I haven't asked. It's Saturday. My family is all out busy doing things. My husband is at a affair with his students that they plan stuff for. And my daughter is at work at the horse barn. And my son is at college, but he is at an invitational sailing national regatta in on a lake in Austin, Texas. Having a grand old time. So the dogs and I are holding down the fort. Did some errands this morning. Very productive. Hope to get a couple videos made. <gasps> oh, I'm happy with that. That's the best one. Let me just give Lord Ganesh a little bit of a wipe here. And a little bit of a wipe here. I'll just let him rest on this. And there is this one. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. So I just want to do... Um, let's see, I have packaging paper. I have a lot of packaging paper left. So I just want to do some with my cute little one here. Um, I haven't used this Wild Honey Distress Ink. This is just straight out Distress Ink. Let's see how, oh my gosh, the pad's coming off. Well, that's interesting. I guess I need to get a new one of those. If any of you had that happen where the pad comes right off the stand. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So that was Wild Honey in Distress Ink. I think I have a Wild Honey in Distress Oxide someplace, don't I? Maybe not. I am making such a mess. Oh, that came out okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where's my... <laughs> Wipe, wipe, wipe. I have some Uncharted Mariner. Let's try the Uncharted Mariner. So I'm just stamping it like a regular stamp now. Yeah, you know what? Uh, the, um, the thin packaging paper is very porous. And it seems to work out well with the, um, the inks. Let's do a festive berries. We can have a whole line. Oh, there's the oxide right there. Oh, this this is also such a super. You can see, look, when I push, it's super juicy. Okay, so that was the just that was the festive berries. Let's do a wild honey oxide because we did the wild honey ink that's the wild honey ink here i'll move it over and we'll do the wild honey oxide right here next above the wild honey ink because you know the, the the oxides just you know it's a different thing they've got the solid pigments that make it the 
oxidiness. And then we have the seedless preserves too. Oh, isn't that interesting? Huh, was not expecting that. The ink actually worked better than the oxide. Okay, I have I have Mariner in an ink. Let's try the Mariner in an ink. I suppose it also could vary also from pad to pad, depending on how old they are, how much juice they have left in them, what condition they're in. So this is the ink. I think maybe because this is such porous paper that the inks, are, the distress inks, are actually working really well. Um, what color inks do I have? Like straight out, flat out distress inks. I don't have a lot of them. Um, I've got some rusty hinge. Here's some rusty hinge. It's an oxide, oxide, oxide ink. Ink. That's a juicy ink too. You can see it beating up. Okay, so this is Rusty Hinge Distress Ink. Ooh, that's interesting, isn't it? purple distress inks. I don't think. I've got Hazard Rose, Tumbled Glass. Those are kind of kind of eh. Oh wait, I have the little ones. I forgot I have these little tiny ones. What do I have? I've got Chipped Sapphire, Salty Ocean, Aged mahogany. Let's try aged mahogany. That might be interesting. Get us a new wipe. I buy bulk packages of these wipes at Aldi's. They're the least expensive ones that I found. Okay, let's do some aged mahogany. These little squares are quite old. I've had them for a really long time. Oh, but look. There's actually, it's beating up quite nicely. It's like a little elephant parade. <coughs> oh yeah, look at that. All right, guys, who knew? Apparently, porous paper and distress inks work really well um and the paints worked okay too the paints worked pretty well on the fabric and the paint worked well on the fabric with the big ganesh and here's the purple um tracing paper actually that might look really nice as an overlay over a page and here is the porous paper ganesha some other inks and we have that porous one and then this cardstock so that was my little experiment and play with inks and wood stamps and i hope you found it helpful tag me if you do it let me see what you do have a great rest of your weekend and i'll talk to you soon bye bye stay safe